Kia ora. Um, my name is Erin. Um, thank you very much for that grand introduction. I don't know if I can live up to it. Um, I think that's more of a certain wish list. Um, I was very fortunate to um, be affiliated with both the Matai Medical Research Institute and I received my engineering education from Auckland Bioengineering Institute. So I get to beach off best of both worlds. Um, today, I'm here, I'm very thrilled to tell you a little bit about the, our concussion project, which is one of the key Matai research projects. Um, you might have seen um, about this project or heard about it through the various means of such as the Gisborne Herald or just bumped into some of our um, participants or anything. So, um, I was just mind blown by the great string of um, intellectuality and stuff from um, previous talks. So hopefully I won't drop the torch too much, but um, let's start with something fun. <laughs> so, um, Let's, um, I've tested this photo. I showed this common domestic animal that I've seen around town. Um, if you were outside at the exhibition hall, you might have noticed this animal on um, Turanga Healthy's poster. Um, I've never seen one in Auckland CBD, to be honest. Um, so I've tested this. So I showed it to three researchers and asked them, what is this animal? By all means, um, researchers are not the common norm. Um, I'm not claiming that. They're a bit of an odd bunch. Um, but none of them were able to identify this animal quickly. So I showed them then a different photo of same animal taken at different time, at different angle. And all of them were able to identify this animal correctly. So just identifying an animal is an easy task, but it needed a different photo. If there is a problem that we want to solve and it's quite complex, then we might need more than a photo, more than an assessment, more than a single snapshot at something. So today I'm hoping to tell you how comprehensive our concussion research data collection has been and what does that mean in terms of research. So what is concussion? Um, as I told you, researchers being a bunch, we would like to call concussion mild traumatic brain injury just emphasizing that it is a mild injury. Um, it has been dubbed the most complex injury of the most complex organ. I understand there are a lot of other researchers studying other organs, but please don't um, fight with me with this. Um, and it is an invisible injury. Um, invisible injury probably because um, it is inside a closed box, skull. It doesn't really help us visualize brains, um, but it is also invisible in a sense that it is hard to, with the current clinical modalities of CTs and MRI, hard to visualize this, even with those technology. That's where the mild comes from. So, um, just to distract you, here is an example of a soft tissue injury. Just like brain, it's a soft tissue, not a hard tissue. Um, your skin is also soft. When you run into something or stumble, you will get a bruise. If it's really bad, you probably get a cut, but we're not talking about the severe kind, we're talking about bruising of the brain. Um, this bruising size, shape, location, and how long it would last will depend on how did you run into something, was it a hard surface, soft surface, um, you know, what were you doing then? But this is a visible injury. Like you will be able to look at it and go like, ah, it'll go away in a few days, or like, nah, that's to last for a few weeks. Um, but it's not as easy for a brain because it is an invisible injury. So what do you get if you get a concussion or suspected to have a concussion and trying to get an assessment? How bad is it? What treatment do you need? Um, in first line of clinical, you will be asked a lot of questions. Questions like, how bad is your headache from zero to six? How bad is your neck pain from zero to six? And the problem is, it does work. It helps you, um, helps the clinicians to discern like how bad things are and stuff. But um, if you ask that of a rugby player who's really healthy and very burly and tolerant to pain, you might get a very different number for a very similar injury. If you ask me, I'll be yelling six, six, six. <laughs> yeah. So that is not very good um, thing for the um, assessment. So this is probably like the photo of the horse that I first showed you maybe not a very good um, capturing of the likeness. So we would like to add 
more information. So in research, we call that a different modality. So in addition to the questionnaire modality, we wanted to add MRI modality. So um, this research has started from 2021, and we threw whatever research sequence we had to see if there is anything, any more information aspect that we can add. So these are a few examples of modality, that, um, MR modality that shows you structure and shapes. So at the right at the top, um, there is the diffusion. Some of you might have seen this. Shows you the networking of the brain, the highway that information is exchanged between different regions of brain. Um, is that changing? Is the, the fibers looking bad or good? In addition, the shapes and size of the brain. Different parts of the brain, are they getting thin, dwindling, or plumping up, or doing anything? Also, another option is to look at the chemical signatures of particular points, especially around the point of injury. Are they telling anything? These all tell different story, different aspect, different angle of taking a photo of what your injury could be. In addition, um, it's just not enough to get a static photo. You also have to look at the dynamics of things. So you've seen the amplified. So we also use we also use amplified um, to see how brain jiggles. Does the jiggling of the brain change as your brain develop like a pressure problem from the injury, um, as your heart pumps the blood in and out of the brain? Um, is the fluid flow change as you change? Um, and the functionality, how does your brain activate when you're resting and thinking and performing tasks before and after the injury? All those things add dynamic aspect of the information. Going back to the bruising, we talked about we really need to know how hard you were running into something and how bad was the impact. Um, so getting just a questionnaire and MRI is not enough to do a very thorough research and understand what a horse looks like. So we strapped um, these mouth guards. So these are instrumented mouth guards. They are custom fitted. So we scan the inside of the oral cavity of each participant, and we print them out and give it to them. And it has the transmitter to transmit information out of it, a battery pack, and sensors to sense um, milliseconds of impact and give you the whole information about how the acceleration was. So that actually tells us how bad, um, how fast, and how things, um, how things were happening. So that's a third modality we're adding on. So hopefully we're getting a better and better picture of the horse. In addition, it's just not in, um, enough to rely on imaging and just an impact data. It is um, given that we all can't get an MRI on the sideline. It's not that easy. Our MRI is not very movable. Um, maybe it's a good thing. So we have to have um, first line of addressing. Can we actually quickly tell something like a COVID test? Yes or no, do you, do you need an MRI or you don't need an MRI maybe? So we looked at the fragment, um, fragments of small RNA molecules that can be released once you get injured. So by collecting spit, which is not the most glorified moment of my research, um, we freeze them. And we send it to our collaborator in ESR to be processed. So hopefully, these markers will try at you from the, um, a rugby game, should you fall, can you spit into a tube, and can you quickly make a decision that should you be sent off to a hospital for an MRI, or can we put you back in the game? Rather than asking the player, bro, are you okay? I think the answer is pretty, like, there's only one option. Um, so, there is more modality and comprehensiveness of this data collected. Um, so yesterday, if you were here last night, Helen Dinesh Meyer was showing how the eye tracking um, aspect was collected. And there are many other researchers collecting this data. So what is, why uh, is this special? Because all of this data was collected from a single individual. So, there are a lot of other research looking at all these different modalities disjointed. So it's like taking a photo of an Icelandic horse, Arabian horse, black horse, white horse, and trying to make some common analysis out of it. If we can rule that variation out, makes my job easier. So 
the Gisborne community, because we had a, such a good relationship, um, where the participants were so patient and generous to sit through, our MRI um, scanning was about an hour and a half. And these are like, you know, um, high school rugby players. To sit still without moving for an hour and a half alone is a feat. And then they were subjected to 15 minutes of eye testing, have to drill into a tube and like, you know, all these things. And they did it. We had amazing retention rates and we have people coming back for longitudinal research. So um, taken a lot of abuse. And this brings into what I'm doing with this. So what do I do? So I sit in front of a computer, look at all these things. And the most important thing is this multimodality data, you have, you have to consider them together to actually see what's working and what's not working, what's important, what's not important, to understand the problem better. To compare apples to apples, not to bananas, um, I need to figure out how to compare an image to a mouth guard data and all those things. Um, so all I see is a computer screen with lots of numbers and which is not a very pretty picture. So whenever I'm asked to like, do you have a cool picture to show to people? My answer is usually, ask Miriam. <laughs> yeah. But this is one of my cool pictures and I wanted to share it because this shows um, that if you try to separate a healthy athlete who's not playing a, con a contact sports but is active athletes and rugby players, based on the size and shape information of your brain scan, um, it is not very easy. However, using the diffusion information, the group starts to separate. And I try to add more and more information and see what separates them better and based on what. So that's what I'm um, paid to do, which I'm really absolutely enjoying. And one of these um, applications of this comprehensive data is computational modeling. So what we want to do with this data, there is a, such a comprehensive set, what about it? is we want to deliver something that's easy to use, easy to understand, an objective tool for clinicians and for the injured person so they can understand the invisible injury better and they can actually see something out about it. And part two of this talk, right after me, um, Dr. Vicky Shim will tell you how this comprehensive data set can translate into a computational model. So um, just to see the breadth and depth of the, the whole this project. This is such a massive project. Um, the photos are of the Matai core MTBI group who are presenting at this symposium. I think you've seen Mary's talk if you were here last night. Um, Josh and Toots will be talking about the community, how the data was collected with the interaction with the participants um, and stuff tonight, um, 5 p.m. And all the bolded names are people who are here in this symposium, thanks for coming. And we're very fortunate to even to have students coming. So we had a lot of guests and it doesn't stop there. Um, there are so many national, international collaborators um, contributing towards this. Um, there are many more names, but I ran out of space. So if your name is not there, just imagine it down there. Um, and it's just so enjoyable to work with such a breadth and comprehensiveness data. It makes it things a bit easier to see the unseen. And lastly, I would like to thank you um, all the funders, especially the community who has gifted us this comprehensive data set. Because if you don't want to donate your data, we can't do anything about it. We will lose our jobs. So thank you, Hugh Green, for letting me fidget with these data and do whatever I want. <laughs> Um, and the rest of the funders, of course. Cool. Thank you. Thank you.